Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Avid Blogs tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Media Composer for Adobe Editors. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, we're going to continue where we left off from the previous lesson where we were talking about acquiring media, importing, consolidating, transcoding, and the proxy timeline, and we're going to carry that directly forward into this lesson where we're going to talk about managing that media that you just created inside of Media Composer. We're going to talk about exactly what happens to your media after it's consolidated, transcoded, or imported. We're going to talk about what exactly the Media Files folder is. We're going to talk about your media creation settings and we're going to talk about the media tool. Now again, I want to remind you, this tutorial series is not designed to teach you how to edit. It's designed to teach you core concepts that are imperative that you understand when working in Media Composer. All right, so let's Command and Tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And you'll see that I have some clips in a bin, two of which I've consolidated, and one I have just linked to. Now again, you'll remember I said in the previous lesson that the great thing with Media Composer is you have that flexibility. Do you want to just get in and link to a bunch of clips and start editing right away? You can do that much like you do inside of Premiere. But what Media Composer excels at is taking your media, your link to media, and converting it into Avid Media that you can then work with in a rock solid editing environment. Now, in this lesson, like I said, we're gonna talk about what exactly happens after you have taken this media and converted it from whatever it happens to be into media that's gonna be located inside of your Avid Media Files folder. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on this clip. I'm gonna come back down to our consolidate transcode function. Now, inside of this window, the first thing I'd like to talk about is right over here on the left-hand side and that is the target drive. Now you'll see because I only have one drive attached to my system, I only have one option as to where I want to send this media to. But if I had multiple hard drives hooked up, I could send media to any drive I want. What's also very cool is I have the flexibility to send specific types of media to specific drives on my system. Meaning, if I wanted to send all of my titles to one location, I wanted to send all my transcodes to another location, I could do that if I want to. In most cases, you're going to want to keep all of your media together. Now, I have all my media going to Media One. Now, why would I want to keep all my media together on an external hard drive? Well, guess what? There's always that situation that's going to arise where maybe you just need to grab that drive, pull it out of your system, stick it in your bag, and take it on the go with you. You have that flexibility. Now, guess what? Don't want to work like that? You only want to work with your internal drives? You can do that as well. Now, I'm going to switch over to transcode for one second because once we switch over to transcode, you'll see down here we have something called the target video resolution that we kind of skipped over a little bit in the last lesson because I wanted to talk about it specifically here. Now, before we do that, I want to talk about this concept, which is that Avid Media Files folder because once we have our video target resolution set and our other options the way that we like and we hit transcode, that media is going to be transcoded into Avid Media into this location here. So I'm going to hide Media Composer. I'm going to head to that hard drive, Media 1, and you'll see that on this hard drive we have a folder called, appropriately enough, Avid Media Files. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that however many drives you have attached to your system, you could very well have one of these folders on every one of those drives. Now, I always tell people to try to stay away from putting media on your launch drive, especially in situations where you're going to be putting it on an external hard drive, because the last thing you want to do is to put media on your internal hard drive, and then you pull your external drive to take it out with you on the road, only to realize you left some of your media back at the office. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how you can make sure that you don't do that in just a second. Now, if I double click on the Avid Media Files folder, you'll see in there we have a folder called MXF, and in there we have two folders, one called One and one called Underscore BG.1. Now, what do these two folders represent? Well, folder number one represents all of the media that I have on this drive here. All of my Avid Media files are going to the same location. And you'll also notice that a lot of the media has actually been named what my clips have been called. You'll see that if I come back into Media Composer right over here, a lot of my clips are called 000586 underscore video tracks HD. And you can see that directly represented here inside of your Media Files folder. Now, many people think, oh, great, well, I'll just come here and I'll just delete all the media I want. Don't do any of that. 
We have a dedicated tool for that, the media tool that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Now, if I step back up a level, I did have that other folder called underscore bg.1. Now, what does this folder represent? Well, this folder represents where all of my background consolidated or transcode media is going to be put when the processes are done. Okay, so let's get back into Media Composer. And we were talking about the video target resolution. Now, right now it's set to DNX HD 175. Now, this is a proprietary AVID resolution that you're going to work with inside of a 23976 project. You'll notice that different video resolutions will appear inside of different projects. So which one do you choose? Well, if you're working on something that you're going to use for broadcast, Inside of a 2398 project at 1080, I recommend DNX HD 175 or DNX HD 115. If you're working in a 1080i project, it'll be DNX HD 220 or DNX HD 145. Now for me, it's normally 145 and 175. Very easy to remember. If you happen to be working on an offline where you've got days and days and days of footage, that you just need to get in and have it a lower resolution, DNX HD is a fantastic option. Very low file sizes, very good quality. Now, you'll notice again that when I came into the Consolidate Transcode window, the DNX HD was already set up for me to work with. It's almost like I had prearranged that. Well, believe it or not, I actually had, and I did that inside of our media creation settings. I'm just gonna cancel out of the Consolidate Transcode window. I'm going to come to my settings and let's find the media creation option, which is right here. Now you'll notice that inside of the media creation options, we have options for all of the different functions that we're going to be doing where we're going to be creating media. You'll see that we have capture, titles, import, mix down and transcode, motion effects. Now right off the top, I have something called drive filtering and indexing. Now you'll remember that I said that you have the ability to filter out that system drive or that launch drive so you can make sure that media doesn't go to it. Well, if you head over to this tab here, you'll see that I have filtered out the system drive and the launch drive. So this way I don't have to worry about any pesky Avid media popping up on that drive because of a mistake that I've made. I always know it's going to go to the right location. Now, by default, you'll see the video resolution here is set to JPEG 2000, 1080p, 23976. And I don't have any other options here under the capture dropdown. What you're going to find in the capture dropdown is resolutions directly based on the hardware that you have on your system. I don't have any hardware on my system, so this is why I only have one option. But depending on, again, the hardware you have installed, you might see a whole ton of resolutions in here that you'll have access to get in and choose. Now, again, you can get in and set different resolutions for the different functions if you want. But this is where I got in and set my video resolution to be DNX HD 175. Now, I do have a few other options that if you're on a PC, you won't have access to. For example, Apple ProRes. So I can work directly with ProRes MXF Media inside of Media Composer if I wanted to. Now, you remember I said DNX HD 175, it was almost like I had chosen it beforehand. Well, this is where I can get in and do that. So for example, let me switch over to Apple ProRes. Once I set Apple ProRes inside of the titles, it's not going to update in everything else. This is where you can get in and set different resolutions based on what you want to do. But you know what? I want everything to be ProRes. So all I'm going to do is with ProRes selected, I'm going to apply that to all. And now ProRes is my option for everything that it can be set for. Okay. Again, video resolution, I only have this option because I don't have any hardware installed. Now, if I happen to have multiple hard drives and I wanted to make sure everything was going to the one hard drive, again, I could set media one and apply that to all. What I'm gonna do now is say, okay, I'm gonna right click on this clip and come back down to consolidate transcode. Let's head to transcode. And now you'll see that Apple ProRes is my target video resolution of choice. All right, now I mentioned when we were in the Avid Media Files folder that you don't want to get in and start deleting media inside of that folder because it's just going to lead to problems with you accidentally deleting the wrong thing. So how do we get in and manage media when we're inside of Media Composer? Well, that is where the Media Tool comes into play. I'm going to come to Tools and I'm going to come down to Media Tool. Now, the Media Tool is going to immediately prompt you and say, OK, Let's first choose what drive you want me to look at. Now, because I only have one drive here, 
I only have one option. Now, this is where things get very interesting. This is where you could do things like assign all of your renders to a specific drive, assign all of your titles to a specific drive. Because in a lot of cases, the first thing that you're going to do when you get in to clean up a project is you're going to delete all your renders. Well, if all your renders are going to one drive, this is a very easy way now to get in and start managing media if you want to. Now, because again, I only have one drive, I only have one option. But one thing that Media Composer will do quickly is it will check to see what projects I have on that one drive and it will show them to me inside of the projects window. Now, in many cases, delete things on a project by project basis. If you get in and try to start deleting everything from inside of one project, that's where it can get a little confusing. But if you stick with one project to get in and manage its media at a time, you can never go wrong. So all I'm gonna do is say, select all the drives, only show me the current project, so no matter what I have selected, it will always go to that current project. Then you have to choose the type of media that you'd like the media tool to show. You'll see that we have master clips. Master clips are the actual clips that appear inside of your bin. You can see them over here. Not the one that has the little link to icon, but the two clips below it. You'll see linked master clips has the little link icon, much like the clip that we have here. Pre-compute clips, meaning rendered effects, clips that you've actually rendered. Maybe it's you know some sort of an animation that you've created with titles and effects and things like that. Or maybe it's titles and Mac keys that you've created. Or last but certainly not least, actual physical media. So let's come in and what I'm gonna do is just select the actual media files and I'm going to say okay. Now remember, it's gonna show me the media files for this entire project. Now, let's say I wanted to delete the media for these two clips that are located inside of my consolidated bin. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky getting in and trying to find those clips in here. I mean, I guess I could you know, look for them. I could search, I could sort, but you know what? That's gonna take a lot of time. So there must be a faster way to do it. Well, there is. We got some great tucked away little features inside of Media Composer that's really gonna help speed up this workflow. Now. What I'm showing you with these clips will also work with sequences as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the two clips in my consolidated bin, and we're gonna navigate over to bin, and I'm gonna come down to select, and inside of the select window, you'll see that we can get in, we can select the reverse, offline items, media relatives, sources, unreferenced clips, and even unrendered titles. Now, what I would like to do is see all of the relatives of these two clips that I've selected in my bin. So what I'm gonna do is say, show me the media relatives. Now, doesn't look like anything's been selected, does it? But you'll see that if I navigate up here, there are the two clips that I consolidated in my project. Now what I'm gonna do is just move the media tool over here. I can actually keep working with the media tool open if I wanted to. I'm just gonna call up that clip there because what I want to do is show you that with this clip up in the preview window, if I decided I don't want these clips in here anymore, I can simply select them. Media Composer will say, do you want to delete these two media files? I'm going to say, okay. It's going to say, wait a second. Are you sure you want to do that? And I am sure. And I say delete. And those clips will now go immediately offline. All right, that wraps up our talk on media management. Coming up in our next lesson, I wanna talk about titling because titling is something that's very important when working in your projects. And inside a Media Composer, you actually have access to three different title tools that you're gonna be able to use to get your jobs done looking the best that they can possibly look. And don't forget that you can get post-production workflow tutorials and industry insight that you need to bring great stories to life by checking us out at avid.com slash media composer.